There are many kings in history who are known as the Great. Tsar Ivan IV of Russia does not hold this epithet and is commonly known as Ivan the Terrible. This raises the obvious question, how terrible was Ivan the Terrible? Terrible is a translation of the Russian word Grozny. Grozny does mean terrible, but not in the modern sense with its moral undertones. So what did he do? Well, Ivan IV was actually the first Tsar of Russia, and his reign, which was a long one, was one of tremendous reform which saw him create many lasting Russian institutions, such as the Russian army, which he started from a corps of professional full-time soldiers called the Streltsy. He also founded Russia's first parliament, made up of the high-ranking nobility called the Zemsky Sabor. He married a Romanov princess, began the Russian expansion into Siberia, and commissioned the very fancy St. Basil's Cathedral. Sounds good, right? Well, Yes, but Ivan was also responsible for certain less good things. Ivan's first wife died in 1560, and some believe that this was his breaking point. After this, Ivan's reign was one of transformation and widespread warfare. This was followed by famine, discontent, and potentially rebellion. So the Sardom was split into two halves. The Zemshina, the southern core based around the capital Moscow, and the Oprichnina, the somewhat recently acquired northern territories from the former Novgorod Republic. Ivan never really trusted those that lived in the conquered territories and was somewhat paranoid about their nobles, called boyars. One of the themes of Ivan's reign is his paranoia surrounding the boyars and his subsequent treatment of them. He was clever about his approach, though. In 1564, at the height of his popularity with the people, Ivan abdicated the throne, blaming the boyars and their incessant scheming. The nobles were unhappy with this because legally they couldn't govern without a Tsar, nobody wanted to pick a new one, and also they lived in a city filled with people who hated them. They begged for him to come back, and he did so on one condition. He wanted to be an absolute monarch. They said yes, which in hindsight was a somewhat silly thing to do. He returned and not long afterwards founded the Oprichniki. This was a secret proto-police force whose job it was to deal with traitors and also administer the Oprichnina. Plague and famine struck Russia in the late 1560s and Ivan was worried that the people of Novgorod might rebel. There was only one course of action to win them over and calm things down. Murder, which he did so by sacking the city. Also, in case you're wondering, the Oprichniki were disbanded in 1572 after it turned out that they were only good at repressing people but terrible at fighting competent enemies. Much of Ivan's efforts hereafter were dedicated to neutering the nobility further and centralising his power. There were limits to how far he was willing to go, so in 1575, again, he abdicated. And it was Simeon, Ivan's close friend, who took up the position as acting ruler. Simeon then, totally of his own free will, decided to seize masses of land from the church before Ivan returned in 1576. Ivan condemned the seizure of these valuable church lands as unchristian, but not enough to give them back, obviously. By the way, during this entire period, Russia was fighting a costly war called the Livonian War against all of these countries. This was because Ivan wanted to incorporate Livonia into Russia. Russia lost. Something else of note happened. When Ivan was mistreating his son's wife, the two got into an argument. The question of loyalty came up and Ivan's son was like, what are you going to do, beat me to death with a scepter? Turns out, yes. In the end, Ivan's reputation as the terrible, be it in either the forceful or evil senses, comes almost entirely from his treatment of the nobles. His constant warfare, centralisation of power and the Oprichniki alongside the murder of his own son certainly soured his legacy, but barring the latter two, there isn't that much that's all too different from Europe's other rulers. And none of those are called the terrible. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with extra thanks to my patrons that you see on screen now. And a special thanks to James Bizanet, Azarka Flash, Mark H, Party Boyko, David Archaeologist, Rob Waterhouse, Chris Wicker, Michael Reynolds, Gustav Swan, Onion Duck, David Silverman, Paul, Maggie Pakskowski, Winston Kaywood, Vasily Aravidis, Christian Cheke, Anthony Beckett, Sky Chappelle, Adam Harvey and Ike.